Hi, James Hargreaves here from Rich Mission Music School. In today's video, we are going to be finding out which is the number one flagship guitar superstore in England. To qualify as a flagship guitar superstore, the shop must be part of a larger chain with multiple outlets. So in this video, I'm not going to be reviewing smaller stores with just one location or even the large local guitar stores that have a significant online presence. They need to be part of a chain. Now, according to Ibis World, the top five musical instrument retailers in the UK are Gear for Music, S&T Audio, Dawson's Music, J&A Beer, and Music in Print. Music in Print sells printed music, obviously. J&A Beer sell high-end violins, but the remaining three are all guitar retailers, and each multiple outlets. The third largest is Dawson's Music. They have shops in Belfast, Chester, Leeds, Liverpool, Manchester and Reading. And their flagship store is in Manchester. The second largest is S&T Audio, who own the amusingly titled chain of PMT Stores, which stands for Professional Music Technology, believe it or not. PMT have a huge number of stores in the UK. They have shops in Birmingham, Bristol, Cambridge, Cardiff, Leeds, Liverpool, London, Manchester, Newcastle, Northampton, Norwich, Nottingham, Oxford, Portsmouth, Romford and Southend. Huge. And their flagship store is in Birmingham. The largest music instrument retailer in the UK is Gear for Music, who have branches in York, Manchester, Sweden and Germany and the flagship Gear for Music store is right in my back garden in York. So interestingly the big three all have their flagship stores not in London, not in the South East, they're all in the north of England. Now of course in the UK there are many other big hitters that I'm not going to cover in this video. There's GAK based in Brighton, there's Anderson's based in Guildford, there's Rich Tone in Sheffield, there's Peach Guitars in Colchester as well, all of which are excellent guitar stores, but again they don't fit the Superstore flagship description as they are only based in one location and are not a chain. The competition lines have been drawn and it all boils down to the big three, York versus Manchester versus Birmingham. I will be reviewing them on the following criteria with 10 points available for each. Number one, accessibility. How easy is the store to find? How easy is it to find parking? How far is the walk from the car park to the store? How easy is it to get around once you are inside the store? Number two, customer service. How polite and helpful are the staff? How patient are they? How knowledgeable are they? Do they seem keen to be involved and be helpful or are they the old school music store staff who tend to treat customers as an irritating nuisance interrupting their day. Thirdly, they will be reviewed on stock and range. Do they have a wide variety of options available to try in person? Do they have a decent amount of instruments on display? Do they carry all the mainstream guitar and amp manufacturers? I'm going to be looking for Fender, Gibson, Ibanez, PRS and Rickenbacker for electrics. I'm going to be looking for Martin, Taylor, Takamini and Tanglewood for acoustics. And I'm going to be looking for Marshall, Blackstar, Vox and Orange for amplifiers. Fourthly, the interior of the shop. Is it tidy or scruffy? Is there space or is it cramped? Is it well lit? Is it dingy? Is it an enjoyable shopping environment or not? And lastly, the fifth point on which I will be reviewing these three superstores is the price. I'll be comparing the price of four very commonly bought items from one store to the other to see which offers the best prices. These items will be a standard Squire Stratocaster, an Epiphone SG, a Boss DS1 distortion pedal and a set of Diodario Gauge 9 guitar strings. And so, after my reviews are complete, each store will be given a mark out of 50, and the winning store will get my business 
for the next significant purchase, which is hopefully going to be a new Black Star amp. Hi, it is 7.30 in the godforsaken morning, and uh, as you can see, it is very dark outside still, and uh, I'm just waiting for the lovely Vicky before we go off on our long road trip, starting with Birmingham. Now, even though today is the first day that we are out of COVID restrictions, I am still playing it safe, so I'm taking my own guitar and my own lead, and just being as careful as possible. I'm only gonna try out amps as well, because that's what I'm buying, is a new amp. She's here. I'm here. <laughs> and we're off. Birmingham, here we come. Well, it was a long trek. It took three hours, but here we are. This is, uh, this is PMT in Birmingham. Uh, the parking's great. We, uh, we just parked right there. Free parking for two hours, so let's have a look inside. This is the view as you walk in the front door. And oh my goodness, this place is huge. Lots and lots and lots of strings. And a huge wall of guitars. If you count this bottom one here, it's four shelves high of guitars. So behind me here, you can see the guitar wall that stretches all the way down to the other end of the warehouse. Very impressive. They're a bit shorter on guitars than they normally would be because they've had so many orders during lockdown. They don't look that short on guitars to me though. Away over there in the hazy distance is a, a whole floor dedicated to drums. So uh, I guess we'll go have a look at that as well now. So upstairs is a pretty cool drum section. There is more snare drums than any sane-minded drummer could possibly need. There's more snare drums. My kids would enjoy this. No one else in the store would. Here's the electric kits and several racks of bass drums. So I'm upstairs now in the Yamaha piano keyboard area. On the accessibility front, all their upper levels, so the, the, the guitar walkway, the drum area, and the Yamaha uh, piano area, were stairs only. So if you are a wheelchair user, you've got no way of getting up there, which that does kind of suck a little bit. I did ask the customer service reps there about wheelchair access, and they said what they would do happily was bring down anything that a wheelchair user wanted to try out. That's not ideal, so I am gonna I am going to penalise a little bit on the accessibility front for the lack of wheelchair access to several important parts of the store. So customer service so far has been really good actually. Um, I asked if they minded if I did a spot of filming and it was fine. Uh, Dave on the door was really nice, um, directed me to the loos, which they have, not everywhere does. So later on. I tried out a Black Star amp because, as I've already said, I'm going to buy one at the end of this video. During that time, a different customer service rep came to help out, came to plug me in and everything. He was, however, pretty unfriendly. He seemed really bored, like he didn't want to be there, and just kind of wandered off halfway through. Wasn't very attentive. And so it was a bit of a 50-50 experience with the customer service, to tell the truth. So we have the biggest wall of guitars I've seen yet in the UK. Behind me here is the bass wall. So the selection of basses is nowhere near the extent of the selection of guitars. But still, not bad at all, not bad at all. They've got a stage in store with PA speakers. And a very cool selection of studio monitors. Here we've got the uh, obligatory DJ stuff. And by the looks of it, we have got not one, but two fairly extensive acoustic guitar rooms. So on the wall, we've got Alvarez. On this wall is Martin. This room is Gibson Acoustics, and this room is Yamaha Acoustics. 
And over in this corner, we've got East Coast as well. I have to be honest, I'm, I'm very impressed. Here we've got a wall of tailors. Oh, it's not a wall of tailors. It's a whole room of tailors. And there's a few washburns on the wall there. This is the, uh, the widest range of acoustic guitars I've ever seen in a guitar shop. And on that wall over there, even though they said it's a bit depleted because of lockdown, it's the largest range of electric guitars I've ever seen as well. So in the UK, that is it's very impressive. Guitar-wise, you only have to look on the wall to see the range. We've got Fender, we've got Gibson. Next week we've got PRS. Here we've got Ibanez. And my wildcard guitar was a Rickenbacker. Not one of the most popular, but a well-loved make and one that not everywhere has. So let's see if we can find a Rickenbacker. There they are, Rickenbackers. So that's 10 out of 10 on the electric guitars, let's check the acoustics. They've already got a whole room dedicated to Taylors and Martins, so let's see if we have the other two, which are Takamini and Tanglewood. Well, straight into the guitar room, two Tanglewoods. So here is a Takamini. So that's all four acoustic makes I was looking for, present and correct. We've got Taylor, Martin, we've got Tanglewood and we've got Takamini. Here is a whole display of Marshall amps. We've also got a whole island of Black Star amps, one of my favourites. We've got a whole display for Orange amps. And there it is, there's Vox. 10 out of 10 for stock and range here. The interior of the shop, it's very cool, it's just open plan. It's just this absolutely huge warehouse stocked to the gills with guitar stuff, amps, drums, keyboards, and they have a demo booth. Let's have a look inside, shall we? So it's just a little practice room where you can plug in and try stuff out, presumably at volume. They have a toilet here, which is a thumbs up on the interior because not everywhere does. One slight markdown, the ladies had no loo roll according to Vicky. But um generally speaking, this is amazing. The only other seriously annoying thing about the shopping environment was the constant lasting music. Okay. It got a little bit irritating after a while from the PA stage, the constant onslaught of noise. So I am going to knock one more point off for that as well. I've decided to leave the price comparisons until last. So for now, let's move on to Manchester. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Manchester. We've driven here from Birmingham and we're now here on Portland Street. And there is Dawson's Guitar Shop. So I'll show you a little bit of the outside first and then we'll go in. So this whole glass fronted building all the way to the end there is the Dawson's building. So it's a pretty big store. Right the way to the end of the street there. So let's go inside. So I'm inside now, we've got two floors. The upper floor is the guitar floor. You can see behind me here, the uh, guitars stretching away to the other end of the store. So here's a really cool drum section downstairs. Got some pretty impressive looking electric kits and some real kits over in the corner there. Danger, do not climb. So these guys have got a slightly bigger DJ section here. Turntables and bits and bobs, you've got your MIDI stuff here, your Moog. Much of downstairs is dedicated to electric stuff, so electronics, DJ stuff, MIDI stuff, it's all down here. And at the far end of the lower floor, we've got pianos. 
So you've got your electric piano keyboards over there, Yamaha stuff, and just two or three real pianos. Now, parking was quite difficult. There is no car park because it's in central Manchester. We had to park on a side road. Uh, Google Maps did not bring us to the store. It brought us to a back street behind the store. Uh, so we had to ask a um, passerby where Portland Street was. Luckily, it was just around the corner. One point to make about accessibility in Manchester, again, was the uh, disabled access problem. So all the guitars were on the first floor and there was no lift up there, there was only stairs. I checked with them and again they made the same offer which was um, they would be happy to bring stuff down for a wheelchair user. The guys at Dawson's in Manchester did say the same thing as the guys in Birmingham which was that they would be happy to bring down anything for a wheelchair user to try out. You know obviously that's very nice they're doing what they can with what they've got but at the same time it would be nice if you're in a wheelchair to be able to browse to be able to just be a normal customer without feeling different you know so I am gonna again penalize some marks for accessibility because the whole guitar section is not accessible to you if you are a wheelchair user So the customer service here at Dawson's has been really good. Um, I was helped upstairs by Alex to try out a Silverline Blackstar amp with a Celestian speaker, which I love. Pretty sure that's the model I'm gonna buy. So the customer service here, 10 out of 10. It's been really good. So there's just 14 bases there on display. There's a pretty good selection of Gretches there as well. We have Fender Electrics. PRS Electrics, check. So there was no Ibanez there and there was no Rickenbacker. So a fairly small selection. I didn't see Gibson either. Um, so yeah, that's interesting for a flagship store. There's just the one um, acoustic room here. So we have Martins, we have Taylors, we have Tanglewood, but no Takamini. That's the uh, the wild card um, make that I threw in there to see if they had some of the more unusual ones. So yeah, size wise, it is much smaller than Birmingham. Um, obviously, location wise, it's nice if you live in Manchester. It's right in the city centre but much, much smaller selection than Birmingham. Now, all the amps in Dawson's in Manchester are on the smaller side, really. So, there's a mini Vox stack. Here's a couple of black stars. There's the dinkiest orange amp you've ever seen. But unfortunately, no Marshalls for sale. There was a small Marshall in the practice room but it wasn't for sale and there are also no marshals listed on the website they have a really good selection of fender and a really good selection of gretch but that's about it for electrics they've got a good selection of taylor acoustics um, a reasonable selection of yamahas unfortunately they don't have a toilet, so that's a mark down on the interior. Um, it's a bit small, it's a bit cramped. I suppose that's what you're gonna get for a city center premises as opposed to somewhere out in an industrial park where you've got all the warehouse space in the world. So this flagship store is a slightly different animal, but it's nice. It's like a bit more like a, a little local store, even though it's not. Here is a cool little guitar demo room. I think their demo room is a bit bigger than the PMT one in Birmingham and it's looking out onto Portland Street in Manchester. But yeah, it's a much, much smaller store. So although it's the flagship store for the third largest musical company in Britain, it is definitely smaller than Birmingham was. So I've been really impressed with the customer service, not hugely impressed with the 
ease of finding the place, parking, and the fact that there's no toilet here. So, um, some good points, some bad points. I'll tot up the scores later. And last of all, ladies and gentlemen, let's pay a visit to York. This is the entrance to Gear for Music. The building's absolutely huge. It's over there, all the way to over there, absolutely massive because it's the, uh, it's the showroom, the big flagship store, and it's the warehouse. So pretty much anything you see on their website, you can order from a computer station and get immediately, which is pretty impressive. Let's talk about accessibility. The Gear for Music store is its really easy to find. It's pretty much a straight shot here. The road on the way in can be a bit of a nightmare if you catch it during rush hour, but most of the time it's fine. This is the visitor car park. No time limit, which is cool. And uh, I've been here lots of times because it's near me and uh, I've never struggled to find the space. And even if I did struggle to find the space, Around that way, there's like a million more parking spaces. So that's really good. So accessibility is pretty good. If you enter Gear for Music into your sat-nav for York, there are two locations. The one you want is the one on Kettle String Lane. The other one is Head Offices, and dozens of times I have rolled up to the wrong location. Thankfully, it's only 10 minutes away from the showroom. So it's really easy to get from there to the correct location. And recently on Google Maps, they have made it clear which one is head offices and which one is the showroom, so that's really helpful. But the one you want is on Kettle String Lane. So, because Gear for Music has really great parking, it's easy to find, and because the whole store is all on one level, so it's wheelchair accessible, it's the only one of the three that is completely wheelchair accessible, and because of that, it gets 10 out of 10 for accessibility. Today is the 3rd of December 2020 and last Friday I sent a Facebook message to the Gear for Music Facebook page and I said Hi, just checking if the store will be open now we have the various new tier system in England. I think North Yorkshire is tier 2 so retail can open. And they responded saying Hi James, we will be reopening for browsing and purchasing over the counter from the 3rd of December. The various visits to guitar shops, driving down to Birmingham and then to Manchester and so on, have been filmed over a process of several days. And so for me to drive to Gear for Music today was an hour and 10 minutes, and then it was an hour and 10 minutes back. And so having been told by them that they would be open, I drove down. I walked in through the front door with my trusty Telecaster, hopefully wanting to try out a new Black Star amp. However, when I walked in, the entrance was cordoned off and there was just one member of staff there who said, I'm sorry, you can't come in. Uh, so I said, I've driven quite a long way to come down here. Could I possibly just chat to a manager? He said, I am a manager. Sorry, you can't come in. So despite having been explicitly told by them they are open for browsing and purchasing and then having driven down the manager just told me sorry you can't come in i've been going to gear for music for years now because they're a, a huge guitar superstore in easy driving distance from where i live but they are unfortunately absolutely legendary for awful customer service around three years ago i ordered a um, hard guitar case for an epiphone gold top uh, I ordered it, it was supposed to arrive on a Saturday. It didn't arrive. I called them, said, hi, what's going on? They said, really sorry, it'll be with you Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday came and Wednesday went. It didn't arrive. So I rang them and said, where is it? Where's this guitar case? And they said, really sorry, it'll be with you Friday. So Friday came and Friday went. And so I called them by now pretty livid on Saturday and said, where is this guitar case? And they said, oh, you need to pay an extra 20 pounds. So 
I said, well, why didn't you tell me that on the last three phone calls? And I got the, the standard line from a Gear for Music employee. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. So I decided, right, well, I don't want the purchase. You've messed me around. Refund me, please. So they did. And I went onto their website to see if I could complain. There was a, an email address, so I, I wrote a complaint and sent it in. Nothing, no response, nothing. After a week, I decided this is ridiculous. I sent another much angrier complaint. I told them, look, I run a music school. If you don't get back to me on this and make things right, I am never gonna shop at your store again, ever. And I'm gonna actively tell my students not to shop at your store. Nothing, no response. In the end, I decided, just maybe more for selfish reasons, because it's so convenient having a guitar superstore right there, I decided to give them one last chance on the phone and say, I need to speak to a manager, please. And I had to battle, I had to battle through several lines of, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. Uh, but after I sort of persisted, I managed to speak to a manager. And when I got through to the manager, he was very apologetic, he made it right, and he actually gave me the guitar case for free, which was fantastic. But the trauma of getting to that point, it was murder. All you have to do is have a, a cursory glance online at some of the reviews and you can see horror stories about people who have done exactly what happened to me today, who've driven hours to go to the store. Uh, there was one story of a, a couple who drove to the store and because they were caught in heavy traffic, it took them two hours to get there and they arrived at the door at two minutes to five and an employee shut the door and locked them out and just kept saying, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. It's that classic gear for music employee line. The employees on the front line in the store or on the phone, their customer service absolutely stinks. It stinks. And for that reason, my long-term experience with gear for music, the clear evidence of other people's experience with gear for music and today's experience with Gear for Music, I'm afraid they get a big fat zero out of 10 for customer service. Now it's such a shame that Gear for Music are so totally hopeless at customer service because most other areas are fantastic. Their stock and their range is absolutely immense. You can see from these photos from inside the store that they tick every single box on the list. And it's not only the guitars and the equipment that's out on display that you can purchase in the store. You can purchase anything that's listed on their website because their main warehouse is attached to the Superstore. So the range is just unbelievable. So when you walk in, you can sit down at these computer terminals at the front of house and you can scan through the website and pick the item you want. And if it says it's available on the website, then it's available in York. Now one really serious markdown for Gear for Music is they don't have a customer toilet. Are you kidding me? So this is the biggest music instrument retailer in the UK. This is their biggest flagship store. I mean, look at the size of the thing. It just goes on forever. It's absolutely huge. They must get massive footfall here and they don't have a customer toilet. There's very little difference in size between the PMT store in Birmingham and Gear for Music in York. PMT is 10,000 square feet and Gear for Music in York is 9,000 square feet. So there's not a lot of difference really. They're pretty close to the same size but as you can see, the inside of Gear for Music is very nice. It's spacious, there's lots of room to move around. Like I mentioned earlier, it's great if you're a wheelchair user, you can get in and out just fine. There's nowhere in the store that's inaccessible to you. There's a large room for electric guitars. There's a large room for acoustic guitars. There's a big central area with lots of electric pianos. You've also got rooms with DJ equipment and studio monitors. You've even got classical instruments in there. You've got saxophones and clarinets. You've got drum kits. So the interior of Gear for Music really is great, but I'm knocking off two points for the lack of a customer toilet. One for the lack of a regular toilet and one for the lack of a disabled toilet. 
The toilets at PMT in Birmingham were accessible for a wheelchair user and it's such a shame that York is fully wheelchair accessible but there's no disabled bathroom. So there's two points knocked off for that. And now it is time for the final scoring criteria, the price. For a Squire Infinity Stratocaster electric guitar in race red, PMT charge £177. For the same guitar, Dawson's charge £169. And for the same guitar, Gear for Music charge the same price as PMT, £177. So the winner on price for the red Squire Strat is Dawson's. For an Epiphone SG Standard Cherry, PMT charge £399. Dawson's unfortunately are no longer stocking Epiphone. And Gear for Music, for an Epiphone SG Standard Cherry it is £375. So on the Epiphone SG that is a win for Gear for Music. For a Boss DS1 distortion pedal, PMT charge £55. Dawson's, again, unfortunately, are no longer stocking Boss, although apparently they may be stocking them again in the near future. And Gear for Music charge £59 for a Boss DS1 pedal, so the win there goes to PMT. So, all three companies, PMT, Dawson's and Gear for Music, have been the cheapest so far on one of the items. The last item is a set of 9 gauge Diodario strings. PMT charge £7.60 for a set of super light 9-42s. Dawson's charge £6.49, so cheaper and Gear for Music charge £5.52. So that is a second win for Gear for Music. This is how I have decided to award the points. Gear for Music had the best prices 50% of the time, so they get 50% of the points, five out of 10. Of the remaining two items, a Squire Stratocaster and a Boss DS1 pedal, the Squire Strat is the bigger purchase, so I'm going to give three points to Dawson's and the remaining two points to PMT. So, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. Let's tot up the final scores. In third place, we have Dawson's Manchester with 28 points. In second place, we have Gear for Music in York with 33 points. And in first place, the clear winner, PMT Birmingham with 35 points. So each of those companies had different strengths. Dawson's was the clear winner on customer service. Gear for Music was the clear winner on accessibility. But I do think it's a, a well-deserved win for PMT in Birmingham. They were basically pretty strong on every front. So a big well done to PMT in Birmingham. I shall look forward to buying my hump from you in the near future. <laughs>